Welcome back to Unsolved Mysteries exclusive series, Chambonet's Web Truths. For tonight's episode, we once again find ourselves back with suspect conspiracist Melinda Kula to discuss the extent of her slander slash defamation against her wrongfully accused suspect William Roan, aka Melinda's Bill Ramsey, in an episode titled Melinda Goes to Washington. And to start, we will turn to a prior appearance Melinda Kula made on the Armchair Defective channel back in April of 2020, where apparently ED could not even get her name correct, but getting ready Right into it, as Alan himself states. Without further ado, here we have Melinda. Yes, hello. How are you, Alan? Thank you for this opportunity to share this terrible tragedy with the world. Thank you. First of all, and Melinda, how long have you been working on this case? You seem an expert, but to me, I've been reading you all day. Since the death of this child, since the death of this child, from the get-go. So that answers a very important question for tonight's content. She has been doing this since the very get-go. And nearly 24 years later, on what would have been JonBenet's 30th birthday, she is still up to no good. As she displays on this Real Cuff Radio YouTube channel video, where she begins to discuss the extent of her spreading of misinformation as she states. That information was given to the Boulder, Colorado Police the Boulder District Attorney and the Boulder Governor, as well as the Attorney General for Colorado in the early stages of the murder investigation. And they chose not to pursue it for whatever reason. That information has repeatedly been given to them for the last 24 years, going on 25, when the Colorado Governor changed the new, new governor was given the same information, but all the additional information that was uncovered since. When the district attorneys kept changing, the new district attorneys were given the package about Bill Ramsey. When the police chiefs changed, they were given the same information, their replacements. So the information has been constantly given to apparently everyone in power in the state of Colorado. But apparently that was not good enough for Melinda Kula. As just a few months back, she went on another YouTube channel, whom I don't like to give any free advertisement to, so I refer to as his rhyming counterpart, the Blasphemy Blue Line Wombat Specimen YouTube channel, in which Melinda Kula tells the same story we just heard, but with a bit more elaboration, as she states. When they stop listening to me, and I sent it to the police chief. I sent it to the district attorney. I sent it to the Colorado governor at that moment in time. And I continued to repeat the process. Then I realized that these inexperienced people of law enforcement who chose to ignore this information, even though we gave them all the links, I decided, okay, let me shame you by taking the same information and giving it to the neighboring police chief, the neighboring town district attorneys, and repeat the process to the state attorney general for Colorado, then the United States attorney general. And all of that information is in several of these books, the date. Well, when they were ignoring that, because I don't know if these people communicated with Bold and said, hey, this, this woman, She's giving us somebody's police report, Bill Ramsey. Do you think maybe you ought to look into this guy? Whether one of them did this from the police departments in the neighboring towns or none of them did it, they certainly got some phone calls of that, I am very sure. Because they also did it in Ocean County, New Jersey, every single town, every single police chief every single mayor and every single attorney general 
So not only did she spread her false narratives all over Colorado, but she did the same thing all over New Jersey. However, that is just the tip of the iceberg, as she is also known to have started her own website on the matter, which appears to have been copywritten in 2009, yet she has likely been making waves much longer before that, as she has also published a book, now known as Secret Santa, My Murderer. However, it was previously known as Santa, Murderer of Mine, which she had discussed on a show called the Opperman Report back in 2014, and apparently this book made it far and wide, as she states. Now let me tell you what else happened. Okay. Someone brought my information to a lot of the congressmen at their own expense, took my book, and had 20, and then 30, and then 50 copies made at their own expense. And they didn't have the money to begin with. But they were so convinced I spoke the truth, and I'm not a liar, that they spent their own money, and they had the pages who work in Washington hand-deliver copies of the book to all the senators and the congressmen. And th this person said, just simply go give it to that person. You don't know where, where it came from. Go give it to them. And go give it to that one. And go give it to that one. Well, 50 copies later, it was making its rounds in Washington. When that happened, the same thing happened from that person's relative in, in uh, Virginia at Quantico. So Quantico is where all the FBI agents are, right. in case you don't know. So what happened is the people in Washington contacted the people in Quantico. The person who handed the book out to those in Quantico was invited to be in a meeting where they discussed not my latest copy of Santa, You Did the Judge, Murder of Mine, which is the name of the book, but they had all four separate copies. Because what I did is, as I gathered more information, I added them to it, changed the paper to a different shade of yellow, golden rod versus a little bit of an orange or a bright canary yellow, et cetera, so that I would know which book was it. Uh, and that's the only thing I changed. In the meantime, somebody walked in with every single version when I updated of that particular book, Santa, You Be the Judge, Murderer of Mine, the John Bonet story. And they were sarcastic. They started out sarcastically saying, well, this woman has all these different books. And the gentleman who was brought in to defend me said, and the only reason why she kept changing the cover was because she added more information. But I checked out every one of those particular four sets, and never once did she remove anything. So therefore, you have nothing to say negative against this woman. So then they said, well, this woman talked about the list of the dead, and we did investigate it. And yes, they are all dead, circumstantial, and you know, there is some suspicion in the death of all these people. But how do we know they're connected? And he said, not only are they connected, but there was not 10. There's a few more she missed that are, are connected because we looked into it. There's 23 people dead, not 10 or 9 because the reporter survived. 23. So she missed, what, 13 more people? So now they're going in to this meeting that lasted all day, closed door meeting in Quantico, Virginia, with some of the senators and congressmen who demanded the meeting. And they showed up, by the way. And this meeting is going on about the information in the book and about Melinda Kula. Who the heck is this woman? I'm a mom. That's who I am. But the information in the book is the gospel truth. Now, for the love of God, seriously, let's not bring the gospel into all of this, because that's just blasphemy. Her whole theory is based in lies. And while we are discussing her Secret Santa books, I would be remiss not to mention that on her 2009 copywritten webpage, she lists her presumably top three goals, one of which, comically enough, is the movie Santa, You Be the Judge, Murderer of Mine, directed by M. Night Shyamalan into the best motion picture of his career and of the century, which I personally find to be absolutely hysterical. But in addition to discussing her book on the Opperman Report in 2014, it was also an active year for Melinda. As in March of that year, according to this Christian Newswire press release, posted on the ChristianNewswire.com website, promoting an event that would occur on Pearl Street in Boulder, Colorado, featuring five national speakers, including the one and only Melinda Kula. That was just one of Melinda's multiple appearances she has made over the years that I am aware of. Besides her 2014 appearance on the Opperman Report, her two appearances on the Real Cuff Radio YouTube channel in 2020, her multiple appearances on the Armchair Defectives channels 
in 2020 and 2021, the Blasphemy Blue Line channel multiple appearances in 2022, and most recently her appearance on the True Murder podcast YouTube channel, which I'm not sure deserves to be known as True Murder, as less than a month ago they hosted Melinda and her lies. But that appearance was such a gem that it will be the topic of its own special new episode scheduled to come out in three weeks, which will simply be tagged Melinda Kula's latest True Murder podcast debacle. But first, I'll need to release next week's episode, which will be tagged Melinda's defamatory sibling rivalry, discussing how she is accusing her own chief of police baby brother of killing their own parents, followed by an episode discussing Melinda Kula exploiting her own sister's tragic unaliving, which you are really not going to want to miss. But I thank you for tuning in to this episode of Chaminade's Web Truths, and please stick around for more exciting episodes from the One Salt Mystery YouTube channel. Now for more Melinda Kula shenanigans, click on the playlist on the upper left. And for more informative episodes on the JonBenet Ramsey case and investigation, click on the logo on the right. But thanks again, we'll catch you on the next one.